Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be me trying on a full face of new makeup products. Some of these are new new, some of these are like new to me. Some of them I have tried, so it's more of a review time. Some of them are more like a first impression type of thing. And it's just fun to just slap on a bunch of makeup on my face. So the first thing I'm going to be doing, putting on my face, is the new Hourglass Foundation. I feel like everyone has been having like very different <laughs> opinion depending on their skin type and preferences. So. I'm gonna start by applying some moisturizer because everyone says it works so much better if you do. So I'm gonna go back to my trusty uh, First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Face Moisturizer. This is like, I don't know, like my eight ball of it. So I'm gonna try and make sure my skin isn't as dehydrated as it is because, I mean, there is like one meter of snow outside, so my skin isn't very happy. Because it wasn't obvious enough with me wanting to kill everyone and eat all the chocolate in the world, my body decided to make it extra clear that I was about to get my period like any second now by growing a third eye. So we're going to be able to test the coverage of the foundation. So this is the Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. I'm going to swatch the two shades that were sent to me so we can uh, decide which color works the best for me, but also just give you an idea of the shade range. Um, it's pretty obvious which shade is going to be my shade. Okay, so I have uh, porcelain and then nude, and as you can tell, they are quite yellow base, both of them. Uh, I'm going to go with, obviously, porcelain. It seems to be a bit too yellow for me, but we're going to make it work. The thing with this is that they say you have to use half a pump for your face, which... <laughs> I don't know about you, but I usually tend to use, on average, about like two pumps for my face and then, you know, blend it a little bit down my neck type of thing. Uh, this is full coverage. Uh, this is natural finish. And they do say it's for a uh, normal combination oily. So if you have dry skin, not ideal for you. I do have uh, normal cheeks. My T-zone definitely gets oily, but I have dry patches like dehydration, especially on my nose. But let me show you how this looks like on me because uh, I'm gonna do like a full pump and try to only use half of it. But so that's a full pump, which is like, pretty normal, it's kind of liquidy, but this is like pigmented, but like ridiculously pigmented. I'm gonna attempt to apply the first half with the brush that they sent to, uh, there's no name, but it's just that a normal kabuki brush. And let's just do it. <laughs> My skin is looking so rough, like the texture is fine, it's just like I tried to like kill them pimples and it just burned the crap out of my face. So I barely touched the foundation and you can see that, um, it's giving me a lot of coverage. Like, barely touched it. Okay, so I'm trying to like do just one half so you can see the coverage, but it's kind of hard. I'm trying to like cover one of the red patch with the brush and then we'll do the other one with the other one, but. So, uh, you can see, I barely used any, and I was able to do half my face with it. Let me zoom you in. So, uh, you can see, it does give you great coverage with very, very little. I'm going to attempt to do the other half with just a makeup sponge, because that's what I usually prefer. I feel like it's more forgiving if you have dehydration, and applies like a thin amount very easily. But I don't know if I prefer, like, I'm usually the sponge person, but for this foundation, I'm kind of unsure how... I feel about it still. So are you ready? Let's start to cover that thing. I can't even keep it together for like the video. I just can't deal. Like, I don't think you can tell actually with the brightness. Like it's sunny for once outside and then I have my lights. I'm gonna like zoom you extra in as usual and show you with the best lighting possible what my skin texture actually looks like but even from this distance I can see it in the mirror so I'm assuming you might be able to see it too but holy shit this is like such a mess I'm supposed to film something else for my book channel after this and I don't even know if I can because I'm gonna look like such a hot mess foundation is the worst like, look, I know my skin isn't looking very good right now because, again, I'm about to have my period and stuff, but, like, hopefully you can kind of see um, my nose is, like, so full of dry patches, but, like, my whole face. My face is fine, usually, but, like, this foundation just 
sit so weirdly on top of like dry skin or like dehydration because I don't have dry skin, dehydrated skin, not the same. But it's just ridiculous, like straight up ridiculous. I did use half a pump for my whole face. It does give you the full coverage, but you need to have literally perfect skin. And now I'm getting so hot from the lights. Let me just remove this. Let me just... So let's start with this lighting. Hopefully you can see this beauty. Can you see this? Like, look at this. Uh, what is this? Like, even my chin is looking terrible. Like, hopefully. Can I, can you zoom in? I don't know. Doesn't seem great to me. Like, all of this. It's just sitting weirdly on my, even my forehead. I never get dry patches on my forehead. It's looking like snake skin. And I never have any issue anywhere else except my nose, usually. And it doesn't even really cover my pimple. Let's, like, try it like a, I would like a concealer with my finger. Because I still kind of want to to cover these things. It should be super easy usually with like concealer because it's not like really textured, it's just red for now. But it just won't cover it nicely. And they say like natural finish, again, if you have zero dehydration, maybe. Full coverage, sure, but again, it's kind of struggling at the same time because if I put more, the finish is gonna become less and less natural. Honestly, it's one of those situations where it's like, look, it either works for you or it doesn't, and it definitely doesn't for me. It just doesn't. So I've been trying to make this work for the longest time, like literally the last two weeks, and it's a big no for my skin type. You might feel different, but I would definitely recommend getting a sample, and you won't need a lot to test it, that's for sure. So, uh, let's go concealer. So let's keep going with something that might be a bit too yellow too for me, so at least it will work. Uh, this is from Smashbox. This is their... Um, Studio Skin Flawless 24 Hour Concealer. I have the shade Fair Light Neutral. And again, I feel like it's not that neutral. I feel like it's a bit more yellow, but oh, it's so light. If you have really fair skin and you're struggling to get concealers that are light enough to actually look light on you, this is perfect. The, the applicator is definitely huge, but it's very, very soft, so I really like it. Again, I'm gonna use my sponge to blend it. But you can see that it's definitely more like than even I need it to be. And I'm definitely not wearing any self tanner, so if you have fair skin, it definitely will be light enough. Wow. And it gives you a really great coverage, by the way. You can already tell. Oops. Jesus. <laughs> oh god. I can't take myself seriously. When my skin looks like crap, like my base, I really struggle to feel like I can make the rest of my face makeup look good. Does anybody else feel the same? Like even when I'm having a really bad skin day and like for some reason my foundation doesn't look good or something, I feel like I can't pull off wearing like bright lipstick or bright eyeshadow. I just feel like I look crazy. This is how this foundation is making me feel like, I feel like a teenager all over again. So uh, you can see, great concealer. Coverage my dark circle. It does last all day. I did test it one time so far, but I've been trying it 24 hours because I don't sleep with my makeup on. But uh, great coverage, definitely looks great. I do have dehydrated under eyes too, and I don't feel like it makes it look overly uh, dry or anything. I would be careful with what powder you use to set it if you have, again, uh, dehydrated skin because you don't want it to be too, too matte because it's already uh, full coverage. But I like the concealer. Let me set the foundation with powder even though it's only gonna make things worse. But I wanted to talk about the new Maybelline uh, powder foundation. This is the Super Stay Full Coverage uh, powder foundation. I'm gonna be using 120 Classic Ivory. I have to say they did send me the whole range and I'm a little disappointed with it because I feel like they usually are pretty good. Like they're uh, same range of uh, liquid foundation that I love. They have like four shades for like light skin, then medium, tan, and then deep, but I feel like the powder foundation, they kind of really skip, like, let me just have a bunch of stuff on it. Let me move them. I don't know about you, but I feel like there's like at least one shade missing in between these two. Actually, these are the three dark shade. That says it all. Just that I would mention it, uh, but the foundation looks fine. I only used it a few times so far, but it's just a normal powder foundation. They say that it gives you full coverage, but I feel like Powder foundation never really gives me full coverage, or at least how I feel about it, but 
trying to swatch it, but I mean, it's pretty good match for my skin tone, so you can't see it that well, but it looks nice. So let me just apply it. I'm just gonna use a big brush and lightly apply it because, I mean, let's be real, nothing's gonna save this right now. But I did try it on top of a BB cream and it worked just fine. I would be actually curious, do you use powder foundation? I feel like sometimes I'll use it if I feel like I'm going somewhere and I don't really want to apply like a full face of makeup. But I feel like I'm kind of left shiny from like skincare. <laughs> so I just apply a little bit of powder and I feel like normal. Otherwise I feel like overly shiny. I don't know why. It's like glowy skin, I should be happy, but I feel like people look at you like you're super oily. <laughs> so yeah, uh, powder, thumbs up, color range, kind of sucks. And uh, it does come with a mirror and a little sponge. I don't remember what I was supposed to use for my brows, but uh, I haven't tried this NYX uh, brow product yet. This is the eyebrow powder pencil in the color Ash Brown, which I'm hoping is going to be a decent color match. From Ooh, this is looking orange. Let's try it anyway. I feel like at this point, things are not working out already. We can go with orange brows. I feel like it's kind of big for a pencil. I mean, I can sharpen it a bit, but I'm just saying. I feel like I'm used to pencil being so tiny now. This really is good though. The color is not that orange though. It's good. You can definitely make that work. No, it's not too bad. I mean, it's orange for me because I like my brows really, really cool, but. I'm a little on the fence about this one. I'm not sure how I feel about it. What do you think? Like they could be a bit sharper, but I refuse to use concealer <laughs> to, to like clean my brows on a daily basis. It's just not realistic. Like at six in the morning, I do not have time to do it. I mean, if I'm going out and wanting to be super extra, maybe, but good enough. You know you're gonna have a great makeup day when you start staying good enough. <laughs> By the way, I started noticing that I'm starting to like my bad brow more than my good brow and I don't know if I'm like going through like a middle life crisis, hopefully not middle life, or like maybe, you know what, anyone that is good with like a horoscope, really? Signs, astrology signs. Are Aries going through something right now? Because I feel like I'm going through a lot of stuff right now. Just saying, like 2019 has been weird so far. So uh, to contour, I'm gonna be using the Sleek Contour Kit. It's not new, but uh, I got it recently again, and it is in the shade Light. And I remember really liking the highlighter, but my skin was just acting weird on the, when I was on the pill, basically I was allergic to everything, and it had corn in it, and I used to break out from it. And I don't have those issues anymore, so let's see if I like it, if it can actually even look decent on top of this foundation. Honestly, if it looks bad, I will absolutely blame the foundation because it's such a shit show. I do have to say that when I get super oily, it starts looking better on the rest of my forehead, but like the nose and like in between my brows, there's like nothing that can save it. It's just... But I've noticed so far, everyone that seems to like it has like perfect skin to begin with, so... Do I sound a little bitter when I say it? Because... I am. The contour is fine, my skin isn't right now, so. Blush, I have been wanting to explore more drugstore blushes, so please let me know your favorite ones down below, but I realized that I haven't tried these, uh, Neutrogena, this is the Healthy Skin Blush in 10 Rosy, and since I'm gonna be using a darker, crazier eye look, I wanted to try and keep it somewhat normal on the cheeks, so. It is actually really pale. I didn't realize. It doesn't look that pale, I feel like, in the pan. It almost has a little bit of a white base, so if you have darker skin, this shade is definitely light. I don't know why I'm not feeling it. I actually, you know what, once again, I shouldn't even test anything on my cheeks right now. Nothing's gonna save this foundation. So we're gonna apply some highlighter, and we're gonna hope that from a distance, everything's gonna look just fine. Because in person, if I see anyone right now, they're going to think I'm like dying of some disease because my skin is looking horrible. But by the way, uh, if you've never tried this highlighter, this contour kit is really good. They also have the three uh, different colors with like a, a blush that looks like a uh, Nars Orgasm. And they have one that is lighter. So if you have like fair skin and then there's a darker one. Actually, there's a medium in this kit too, I know for sure. And maybe a dark. 
So let me just swatch them. I should have done that from the beginning. Um, so this is what they look like. And you can see how glowy and gorgeous the highlighter is. Honestly, the kit is worth it just for that. And I like that it's not glittery whatsoever. It's kind of a soft metallic one. It's not, I feel like highlighters have become so intense that I don't find them wearable on a daily basis. Like maybe on a very sunny day during the summer if you want to be like blinding everyone. But I can't wear this at work. But this I totally can and definitely recommend it. It's absolutely beautiful. The bronzer is a bit dark for me. I was hoping it wouldn't be this dark since it's the light shade. I actually had to double check if it wasn't medium. But I'll try it again during uh, the summer. I feel like it blended okay, but again, damn you, Hourglass Foundation. Uh, the bottom came out with some, uh, what's the tea? Palettes, which, let's be real. Yes, please. Uh, everyone has been so obsessed with drama, and honestly, this is my tea. I'm so over it. I'm so over it. Like, I feel like I can't... Everyone is like, oh, everyone's being so negative, but then everyone freaking watched that crap. Like, stop encouraging it. Like, it's getting so out of hand. So, I'm ignoring all of it, and I'm gonna be swatching all of these because some of the shades are really great, some not so much. So, uh, they have a cool tone one called, uh, they're all called What's the Tea, but this one is the uh, Ice Tea version, which, how adorable is this? Like, they're so, so cute. Uh, it also comes, both of them, with a uh, light and dark primer that can change the color. They do, oh my god, I don't know what happened to it. Like, it does affect the color type of thing. But let me just swatch them on my arm because, again, they're not all created equal. Honestly, overall, my thoughts on these uh, palettes is that some of the mattes are just too chalky and dry. They don't blend nicely, so if you want to, like, put them on your lid, you might be able to make them look good. If you're trying to blend them in your crease, it becomes muddy very quickly. So you got Kiss and Tell, which is pretty. The Buzz, which is okay if you, again, want to apply it all over the lid. Uh, Take the Town, I feel, is a bit dry. Then you get, rumor has it, the 411. They are beautiful. Uh, he, he Said, She Said is stunning. I just wish it was more pigmented. It's just so pretty. I can only use it. I feel like it's going to be like on the lid type of thing, but I'm gonna probably have to like pack it on to get full intensity. Like you can barely see it on my arm like this. Like it's the invisible shade in the middle right now. And you have Oh Snap, which is great. The Rundown and Latest Scoop though are pretty dry and they're the type of shades that will become a bit too muddy whenever I try to blend them too much. So just be careful with them. I feel like from the swatches, you can kind of see that they're not as cool as they could be. Like for a cool tone palette, I don't feel like it's that cool. Like I feel like even this one is pretty warm. So this isn't my favorite out of the two. The warm one is definitely prettier slash I love even the design of it. Like, how cute is this? Like, this is absolutely adorable. I have the same issues with it. Uh, this one I did try on the eye and it's where I'm getting that the formula of the, some of the mattes is too dry and just ends up muddy. I'm gonna hope I can make it look decent this time, but it, it's rough a little. Let me swatch them. Once again, this one has the darker and uh, lighter primer to affect the shades. So you get Hey Girl Hey, Ooh La La, Spill the Bean, Word on the Street, On the Down Low, Tell All, Receipts, Drama Queen, and Scandalous. I feel like Scandalous, the last one, is the worst one of them. I feel like it's the one that gets super muddy. And I feel like the first two seem to blend nicely, but I feel like, again, on the eye, they tend to get muddy quite fast. I feel like eyeshadows like these tend to make me feel like I can't blend to save my life, which is definitely still a possibility. But uh, I think I'm going to try to do like a half cut crease or something to try and hide everything. And I feel like with eyeliner and mascara, I'm not going to wear false lashes because I kind of want to test the mascara. Although maybe if it sucks, it's hopefully going to hide most of the bad blending. I'm going to attempt to do this not too intense, but every time I say that, it does become intense. So whatever. Uh, we're going to start by using probably this one, actually. This is the receipts one. We want the receipts, and why is it not focusing? There you go, kind of, maybe. So yeah, we're gonna start with receipts, which is just the kind of peachy light color. I probably should have primed my eyes. Whatevs, we're just gonna go for it. By the way, if you're still looking for great eye brushes, absolutely get the Wet n Wild ones. They're just so good, and they're affordable compared to so many other ones, and they seem to resist me washing them too. Not that I wash my brushes often enough, but you know, when I do do it, they end up looking, looking still fine. 
I don't know why I'm using that far mirror when I have like, this huge one on the palette. Because logic. Oh god, that's why I don't do it. I can see my skin. <laughs> oh my god, it's so bad. One of the things I've been wanting to work on this year is to like try not to blame myself when something doesn't work. Like, oh, the eyeshadow is not blending well, it's me that sucks. It's not the eyeshadow palette. Or like, my foundation looks like crap. Oh, it must be my skin. I'm not the one that's uh, not taking care of it well enough. Or these jeans look like crap on me. It's because I'm not working out enough. I'm eating crap. But no. It can be a product. It's not always me. It doesn't have to be me. You know, in my head it can be anything. <laughs> it's me attempting to be more positive about these things. Uh, that eyeshadow looked great. So no blaming on this one. Uh, let's go with maybe a bit of a uh, Ooh La La and Hey Girl Hey. Let's start with uh, Ooh La La. I'm kind of scared a bit of that one. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, I have a bad feeling about this color. I'm just gonna apply a little bit. <laughs> like, I feel like sometimes on the internet, like, the more dramatic looks are definitely the ones that are sought out more but I can see sometimes the quality of eyeshadow palette on how easy it is to make it wearable to because if you can only make it work with dramatic looks then what's the point for me on a daily basis I can't always wear crazy cut crease I'm interested in how more wearable looks end up looking I don't know how you guys feel about it. Uh, maybe a little bit of Hey Girl Hey. Just a little bit because it's so pretty. I feel like that's gonna be a very popular color for the summer. Oh, that, that was not a little. See, it's not blending. I barely had any and it's just, It's looking so patchy. It's making me so sad because it's such a pretty color, but unless you use it just to deepen out the outer corner. Okay, so I think that's gonna be the best I can make it look. Um, the brown Lola blends okay. A girl hey does not blend nicely. So if you just use it in your outer V, you can make it look good. But it's not ideal. So I'm going to try to apply the neutral uh, eyelid primer on my first half of my eyelid to try and see how intense we can make. I think we're going to go with like on the down low all over my lid. I'm trying not to make a mess. Oh, it's such a pretty eyeshadow color though. I'm really sad I can't make them blend a bit nicer because the colors are so pretty. Let me know if you have tried them and if you also have that issue or if it's just me that just should reconsider my career. I'm going to use the same colors on the bottom basically. I feel like all things considered it could have looked worse. Uh, I'm, I think it's okay. I feel like again I'm disappointed with some of the shades how they blend and um, I don't know how I feel about the overall palette yet. I feel like to end up enjoying it, I'm gonna have to mix it with other shadows, which again, is not that big of a deal since I have so many other shallot, shallot? <laughs> eyeshadow palettes, but if you don't have a lot, it wouldn't be necessarily the first palette I would recommend you get, especially, I don't feel like it's the most beginner-friendly one. So now, uh, eyeliner. I'm gonna be using the Benefit Rolly Lash, Rolly Lash Eyeliner, which I was so excited about since I love the mascara. And honestly, again, it's just something I have tried. I feel like I've been wanting to do this video for the longest time that I started testing my products, and I feel like most of them now I've tested, but it's more reviews in one video. Uh, my only complaint about this is the fact that the felt tip is kind of big, and I feel like I've been using a lot the uh, Stila like mini one, and I feel like I enjoy that one because it's so small, and I feel like this one can't get precise enough for my liking. But it applies fine, to be honest. So let me just try to do it, and hopefully it looks decent and doesn't contradict everything I've just said. 
I do like that it's matte and like dark black though. Like I feel like I struggle to make the fine fine point as fine as I would like and as dark as I would like, but it's really gonna depend on how you do your eyeliner. Otherwise, I feel like it looks great. So this is what it looks like when I swatch on my hand. It's like very dark, it does dry matte, and I feel like usually matte eyeliners end up being quite like moussey, which is fine, it just, I feel like it's thicker. Uh, this one is definitely a liquid uh, felt tip eyeliner, and so far so good. It just, I wish it was a tiny bit smaller, that's all. Mascara. I feel like I haven't tried an e.l.f. mascara in absolutely forever. Uh, I feel like I tried them like five years ago when they first came out type of thing and they did nothing for me and I wanted to try this one. This one is called the uh, Keep Your Curl Mascara which is one of the things I need the most. My lashes are pretty long but they are definitely straight and even a little downward. So anything that gives me a bit of volume, a little bit of length and definitely some curl I end up liking. So let's see how that goes. The brush seems Promising. Has a little bit of a curl itself. And it doesn't do anything. Um, if you like very, 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 very natural mascaras that curl your lashes a tiny bit, just makes them a little blacker, not still length or volume, then you will like this. I'm assuming it's probably like under $5, so it is budget friendly if that's something you enjoy, but it just doesn't do enough. Like even on a daily basis, I can find mascaras that will do much more for me. Like I need to really, really build it up. And it's finally starting to actually look more decent now that it's drying. Okay, maybe this, maybe this is the key. Let it dry a bit and then apply like a million coat to make it look okay. It definitely is the key. Okay, now we're in business. You definitely need like a lot of coats, but finally looks like I'm wearing mascara. One with, one without. So you can see it does crawl. It gave me some volume eventually. It just needed to be persistent. And this is what it looks like when I'm looking up. Hopefully at one point it will zoom <laughs> and be in focus. So not too bad. I mean, it's not my favorite mascara, but I could wear it. My skin is looking so bad. <laughs> oh, I'm having flashback of the Maybelline Stick Foundation or the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Foundation. Like this is how bad it looks right now. The mascara, honestly, I wouldn't go out of out of my way to get my hands on it. I probably wouldn't repurchase it. Uh, like if I'm stuck wearing it a day, I'll survive. But like if you tell me it's for a month, it's the only mascara I'm gonna have to use, I would be sad. Uh, I'll let you know on the screen if it flakes or smudges, but I mean, it's okay. It's just not for me, but mascara is one of those things that you never know how it's going to turn out for you. I have some of the uh, new Maybelline lipsticks. Those are the, um, so they're not saying it, but those are the like for me, every skin to tone type of lipstick color. Let me swatch the colors that I do have. So you have Spice for me. Uh, we have Mauve for me, which, let's be real, is going to be my shade. Then we have Pink for me, which is also absolutely going to be my shade. I think so far this is my favorite one. Then you have Fuchsia for me, which I feel like these type of colors are so underrated, but they make me look alive when I look dead during the winter, especially if I'm sick. So pretty. Then you have Red for me, which is kind of a classic red, maybe a touch on the cool tone side, which makes your teeth look good. And this is Ruby for me, which... This is nice. And then you have Plum for me, which looks gorgeous, like gorgeous berry shade, which would look amazing on deeper skin tones or during the fall. Uh, I feel like it's the only one that looks a little patchy, but you'll notice in general, lip products that have purple, it's almost impossible to get them perfectly even, so it's just something to bear in mind. So I think I'm gonna go with, actually I was going to go with Pink for me, which is not gonna match this color. So maybe I should try Spice for me. Is it too dark? Probably gonna be dark, but eh. It's definitely dark. <laughs> it's kind of the things with universal colors, obviously the nudes are gonna be quite dark on my skin tone compared to obviously the deeper skin tone, but that's the only way to make it uh, uh, universal, right? So this is what that one looks like. I feel like it might be too dark for this 
I look, but yeah. I think it's just because I'm so fair right now. But I have to say the colors that I have are gorgeous. Like, I'm liking it. I just don't think this lipstick colors for me. It's definitely too orange and I feel like it makes my teeth look kind of yellow. And you're definitely not yellow. Not this yellow. <laughs> Let me try the pink for me because I feel like it's the one I'm gonna wear the most. Yeah, I like this. Obviously not with this eye makeup, but it just speaks to my soul. Maybe red for me. Oh, that's definitely not gonna work with this eye makeup. Yeah, this is so going to clash with this eye makeup. Damn it, I'm trying to find the perfect shade in this range for this look. You know, I think I'm gonna mix Moth for me and Spice for me for this look. Oh, actually, maybe this one on its own. It's not too bad, with just a hint of the other one. We're customizing our stuff here. I think that's better, maybe. So what do you guys think? Uh, anything in here that caught your eye that you feel like you need to try now? Anything that you have tried from these uh, products and just let me know your opinions because I would like to be able to share and compare with you. Uh, definitely recommend these lipsticks though. I haven't obviously done a wear test, but I feel like there's been like, I can count on one hand the lipstick from Maybelline that haven't worked for me. They're usually so great. Their formula, their pigmentation, the range of colors, just such a thumbs up. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss any future videos. I will be putting on the screen other ones that I've done and that I recommend you check out. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.